Download where we connect the dots for you, coming to you live from Church Milton headquarters here in the Archdiocese of Detroit. The Archdiocese of New York is the most prestigious of all of the dioceses in America, owing, of course, to being in New York, sort of the capital of the universe. While the sea in Baltimore is, or while the sea is in Baltimore for the U.S., New York long ago eclipsed prominence of all the other dioceses in the country. So, what happens in New York is pivotal as far as perception and reality. Right now, there is a $200 million fundraising campaign going on in New York, an almost desperate pitch, which various clergy in New York have described to us, of course anonymously, trying to get blood out of a turnip. So we're gonna talk about the Archdiocese of New York today and its financial health, but most importantly, the reasons behind the appeal and the need for the cash injection. Christine's going to speak specifically about the appeal itself, which is called Renew and Rebuild, and the on-the-ground reality of it, what's going on there. Brad is going to give us an update on the infamous Father McQuelly case, a priest who, from all accounts, still appears to be on the payroll of the Archdiocese. And Rodney is going to talk about one little line item that does not appear directly on the financial statements, and for good reason. But before we begin, just to let viewers know, we have been scanning and reviewing all of the Archdiocese financials here, that's what you see in front of me, uh, all of their financials now for a couple of days and much of our info comes from a preliminary review of all of this. We've been checking them all the way back to 2009. There's some interesting things that pop out. We want to go through a little bit more of a uh, you know, review process and one set of numbers, there seems to be this, this uh, disagreement between uh, what they report one year for income and loss and expenses in 2012 and then the next year when they repeat those numbers, they're different. And maybe it's an accounting error, uh, but it's very, very odd to have 2012 sort of put to bed, and then when you open it up and repeat it, all of a sudden there's a $10 million discrepancy. That's that's a little odd. But and there's other things that we don't even just go through and look them over the next couple of days. We've got a CPA is going to review them for us and take a look and see what we can. Uh, uh, see if there's anything kind of odd here. But I do want to say before we get into the parts here that. Reviewing something as complex as the Archdiocese of New York's financial statements is, it is complex. There are like 19 sub-companies or corporations that they have here. They're all 501c3s, nonprofits, but they all feed into each other and there's money going from this one to that one and it's, and what all we have is just a summary statement. So there's no way to really know how much of this, you know, did one of these 19 lose money or did 18 of them lose money and the other one got a whole bunch of money because all we see is the composite of all of them. But still, there's some very interesting things here that we're we're going to get into uh, as we move along here in the show. But first, they want $200 million. Right. So this is a capital campaign called Renew and Rebuild, and the aim is to raise $200 million total. And it's going to various different things, Catholic charities, seminary schools, parishes, the Archdiocese, St. Patrick Cathedral. Now, if you all recall, um, $175 million was set aside just a few years ago to renovate St. Patrick's Cathedral and apparently they're still needing more money to do this. Um, but yeah, $200 million, and um, like Michael mentioned, you know, it, it is like squeezing blood out of a turnip. We were able to obtain a letter sent from Cardinal Dolan um, on behalf of this particular parish, St. Columba, to a parishioner, and this particular parish, St. Columba, is trying to raise about $750,000 total. They're asking this one parishioner, if you can just, I know the text is small, but right in the middle of it, uh, the third paragraph down, it says, as one of the parish's most devoted parishioners, both Father Bonici and I hope you will consider a sacrificial gift of $250,000 to be paid over a five-year period. That's one-third of the entire <laughs> fundraising goal of that parish. But 26% um, of the entire fundraising goal is going to be going to the archdiocese. Now, What's interesting is when we were looking at the financials, which the New York Archdiocese has made public on its site, anyone can go and look it up, uh, going back to 2009, what is very interesting is that if you look at the um, 
operating costs of the Archdiocese in New York services, which is kind of the central, you know, that's the Archdiocese, the Chancery, various services there, um, they every single year are operating at a loss in the millions of dollars. So let's look through these numbers now, 2009, $21 million operating loss by the end of the year. 2010, $15.6 million operating loss. 2011, $13.4 million operating loss. 2012, $8.7 million operating loss. 2013, $13.4 million. 2014, $19 million. 2015, again, $19 million. And finally, the latest figures we have, uh, 2016, a $12 million operating loss. And what's really interesting is that, so this is cash that's being lost every year and it's not clear at all from the financials how, how they're making up for that lost cash. Yeah, it's a little different. First of all, if you add up all of those numbers, it adds up to $122.1 million, $122 million loss in eight years. Uh, but interestingly, and this is one of the things we want to do a sort of a deeper review on these, the assets of the archdiocese, including their cash on hand, keeps going up, which is bizarre. So... You know, it's it's a question for anybody who understands sort of accounting principles. The balance sheet is something entirely different from your revenue and expenses. This is just your operating cost over the course of a year. You, know, you pay out salaries, you do this, you do that, da da. But what's going on is the as the overall picture. You know, people could just say, oh, you know, here's a hundred million dollar property. Okay, well then your assets increase by a hundred million dollars, but that doesn't touch your operating flow of your, you know, your cash flow because it, they'd have nothing to do with each other. Uh, but it's to be to continue to sustain those kinds of losses, you know, year on year. I, mean, I think the lowest one was about nine million, and mm -hmm. I mean. That's a substantial loss of money. Now, as you read through these financials, one thing that did pop out, which is sort of the reason for this $200 million thing, and this is kind of the drill here, I and mean, there's sort of two pictures. There's the amount of wealth that a diocese or an archdiocese is just sitting on. Could be anything. You know, people over the course of, you know, years and decades, of, they die and they leave this big, huge piece of land, and the archdiocese, like many nonprofits, just sits on it, lets it increase in value. That's one part. But the operating loss thing is another because one of the major reasons that there is an operating loss every year, according to what we can see here at sort of a preliminary review, is the archdiocese, the central offices, are doling out all kinds of money, no pun intended there, are doling <laughs> out <laughs> all kinds of money to keep the parishes solvent. And that's the reason for this $200 million fundraising campaign. It's being pushed onto the parishes to make up their own deficits. Yeah. And that becomes problematic because now you have to ask the question, like you would in a, since we're talking about money, you'd look at this as a business thing. Well, what are all of these little affiliate companies of yours all losing? Why are they all losing money? Why do we have to keep, you know, why does Daddy Warbucks have to keep moving in and doling a million here and a million there to kind of keep everything solvent? Well, we know the answer to that because the parish numbers have declined. This is why they're closing the parishes. What, what did he just go through, a 36 parish closing? Yeah, that's something we should remind reader, uh, viewers as well, is just two years ago they closed their Making All Things New campaign, which was the Archdiocese's biggest parish restructuring campaign in its history. Restructuring. Uh, yeah, but a lot of them were being, that's what they call it, but really it's just shuttering down parishes, merging them. And now at the time they said we don't plan to be selling off these properties anytime soon, anytime Until soon, <laughs> but they have sold properties in the past for the millions because a lot of them are sit on prime real estate. Yeah, and some of these things, the ones in Manhattan, for yes. example, Manhattan is one of the areas obviously encompassed by the Archdiocese of New York. And I mean, you just have a piece of land mm -hmm. and you're going to get into one specific piece of land and it's worth, and it's not even the land, it's actually just the, well, it's the lease on the land. Um, there is, uh, I mean, any of these properties are worth, in Manhattan, are worth tens of millions of dollars. So if you get to the point, and this is what's kind of disingenuous about this, that aside from parish properties, the archdiocese has all kinds of property, investment property, that the archdiocese can just sell off. They want $200 million, they could sell the land under Yankee Stadium and have, uh, and have their $200 million like that. But the central offices is kind of pitting itself against the parishes and it's the priests 
in the parishes that are having to go out and do this like, Mrs. Jones, hi, this is Father Smith. Can I come talk to you? See, we're having a rough time. Now, well, we mentioned this in the Vortex today, a number of uh, clergy in New York told us that they are being pulled out of sort of regular rotation for a little bit and put through, essentially, put the squeeze on your parishioners' tutorials. And none of them like it. They don't like going to their people, like you know, this letter here, for example. This gets a follow-up from the pastor. And he has to sit there and try to put the squeeze on them. And you got to say, why is the archdiocese forcing this issue with the parishes when the archdiocese, according to their own balance sheets, I mean, this is their most recent one, their own balance sheet, they're sitting on uh, their total net assets of $271 million as of 2016. Well, you know, 271, couldn't you kick in 100 million of the 200 million campaign? You know, why are those parishes on the decline? Because the Catholics in them have not been given the faith. And so they shrink and people leave and they convert and they become atheists or whatever. And so now the few good Catholics left are the ones that have to foot the bill for a series of policies that were introduced by the leadership of New York. While the leadership of New York is sitting on 600... $696 million in total assets. Of course, that's offset by you know, 400 and something million dollars. But still, they've got $271 million in net assets. And yet, they're bleeding the parishioners dry. That's not, that's not a way to run a candy store. You don't do that. That's not fair. It's not fair to these priests. It's not fair to this lady who got this you know, note. Can you give us $250,000? I mean, maybe she's got 10 million. That's not the point. I have no idea what she has. But, you know, to go after the individual parishioners and to take the priest out of circulation for a couple of days and train them up on how to squeeze the parishioners when all of this is their fault. Exactly. It's, it's disgusting. It is. It's disgusting. And, you know, New York is not the only one. Right here in, what, we have a $130 million campaign going on here in Detroit? Something like that? Something $130 like that, million? Yeah. So many dioceses are doing this. That's the reason we're actually doing this show, to make people aware. You know, the bottom line answer is why is this necessary? Church never used to launch these hundreds of millions of dollars worth of campaigns before because you had churches packed and people would give their money. And heck, it was all those churches were built <laughs> by good Catholics. And now you're selling them off. It's, it's disgusting that, that this sort of thing would be going on. You got $271 million right there. We're going to get, when we get to your part, I'm very excited to get to your part because we know there's a number on here that isn't included that we know about. But one example, uh, Brad, has to do with uh, uh, our friend Father McQuelly. Well, yeah, it's a two edged sword with uh, people like Father uh, Peter McQuelly because one, they're driving parishioners away, and two, they're costing the diocese a lot of money. The infamous case of Father Peter McQuelly allegedly embezzled up to $1 million from two parishes, St. Francis Cabrini and St. Francis de Chantel. Uh, basically, the DA looked into it recently, and after I would uh, allege that the books uh, have been cooked because we have inf inside information about what's been going on in those parishes, from people who have access to that information, uh, the DA found that at least $22,450 was uh, misappropriated to Father McQuelly, don't use the word embezzlement, because uh, that's uh, grand larceny, two to seven years in prison. The archdiocese actually. Hold on a second. It is, it's third degree larceny, right, in New York because of the yeah, amount. Yeah, two to seven years in prison. Yeah, New York state law. I mean, he took grand 20, larceny. Yeah, yeah, he took twenty-two thousand dollars, and, and and we know that he took it because the the, the DA arrived at that conclusion, yeah. and the archdiocese of New York said, okay, we'll write a check and give it back to the right. give it back to the parish, and we won't pursue anything. So, so yeah. everybody's admitted the guilt of the man doing it, and yet nothing happens exactly. to him. Right. So that's the bottom line right there, the smoking gun, the fact that the uh, diocese did reimburse the parish for this amount of money. But as far as we know, there has been no reports of laicization of Father McQuelly, uh, therefore presumably still on the payroll. Uh, the amount of publicity in this overall case was due also to a case where he used the money, allegedly, for a um, ongoing gay for pay prostitute, uh, Keith Christ, with uh, drug fueled uh, engagements there. We have uh, Tatiana Agudin shown with Keith Christ, a girlfriend, inside information uh, with regard to this relationship that had been going on for uh, many years. Also, parishioners speak of this relationship. Now, 
this particular angle, the diocese says, well, nothing has been brought forward to substantiate them as far as the claims of sexual, uh, mis uh, you know, uh, inappropriate behavior on the part of their priest, Father McQuelly. So that's uh, kind of just left out there. The DA didn't even look at that because the diocese says, oh, we don't have anything to substantiate this. So well, there's nothing criminal that, uh, aside from the money. Aside from the money. I mean, if, if Father McQuelly wants to have a gay for pay, you know, prostitute, I and mean, that's nothing, you know, well, I suppose prostitution probably is illegal, but the, there's no crime being committed where he's like paying for his rent in his apartment. And it's, well, the uh, idea that the DA didn't. Uh, give him a pass. It was just not something they looked into. So it's not that they exonerated him in any way, the DA, on that particular account. That's a big thing to know. And the fact that they did prove that the money went out the door. Uh, the diocese on their part saying, well, we don't have anything to look at with regard to the sexual appropriate, uh, appropriate conduct, but we do know the money went out the door. And this guy, uh, as far allegedly, is uh, still at large outside of the diocese in a pl non platonic relationship with a, a male person. Uh, living yeah, arrangements. So are that's report, a, a, those are the alleged. reports we've had. Yeah. On, on this score, very quickly, when you look at the Father Peter McQuelly case, there are two aspects to it. There's the financial, which seems to have been resolved and wrapped up, however, probably unfairly, I believe a good number of people who are very close to the case feel. Fact is, he's guilty. They, he took $22,000, and the Archdiocese reimbursed St. Francis de Chantel Parish in the Bronx for it. The second thing in the Archdiocese claim that there's not any sort of sufficient evidence, no evidence has brought, been brought forward. We know, we know that is a pack of lies. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I read the texts on Tatiana's phone from Keith talking about dozens of sexual encounters with Father McQuelly. I can't say them here because it's pretty coarse language. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> at all they want, they want evidence, pick up the phone and call Tatiana and say, hey, can we see your phone? Well, we I, also I know from him. his own relatives, uh, uh, yeah. Father McQuelly's brothers, two of them that we spoke with, uh, both confirmed that he and Chris were together for many, where the parishioners themselves uh, see that McQuelly is living with Chris in. I mean, the uh, evidence, in, evidence is overwhelming. Yeah, evidence is uh, overwhelming. So for the, for the archdiocese to come out and say, oh, there's n not enough ev evidence to substantiate the claim, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a pack of lies. Well, the problem is McQuelly goes down, there's a meteorite crater. There's so much the corruption there, and people just, uh, yeah, just so much corruption. It, it, I mean, I just made a little note here of, of a, a couple of things. Um, uh, McQu McQuelly hired, uh, uh, hired Keith Christ. Now, you saw the picture of Keith Christ. He was working on the Roosevelt Island Parish, uh, uh, Cabrini Parish, in the gift shop, getting $800 uh, uh, under the table. I know that for a fact. There he is. I mean, look at that. Now, if, <laughs> can you imagine walking into a gift shop <laughs> and there's the guy selling you statues of St. Therese? <laughs> uh, he, his apartment was paid for. Uh, on Roosevelt Island by Father McQuelly. Uh, we know that, um, we know because we've got multiple eyewitnesses that Keith Christ picked up Cardinal O'Brien, Edwin O'Brien, when he used to come and visit them. I mean, there was a relationship. We know from Tatiana's texts from Keith that there was a sexual relationship going on. We know these things. The Archdiocese of New York ever even did a, uh, what is that, uh, environment or, environmental safety thing. They put notices up. The Archdiocese put up notices on the various buildings and properties of uh, uh, St. Francis de Chantel in the Bronx. They put up various notices saying, this man cannot be on the property because he <laughs> failed the safety environment thing. Now, we don't know why he failed it, but that's not the point. I mean, the point is... I mean, there's a relationship going Absolutely. on here for years. And, and the thing is, the Archdiocese knew it. Yes. They knew it, and they didn't do anything about it. And it wasn't until there was a lawsuit filed and Church Militant start, started reporting on it and it got national media attention that finally something happened, which is that he was forced to resign. But since then, nothing has happened. Even Joe Zwilling, the communications director, specifically told the press, we are not pursuing laicization. Now, since that, I mean, we don't know what they've done since that time, but as far as we know, they've not That's announced. That's the last official public record of it, yeah, the public but, statement. You know, but we have uh, evidence of other priests who are immediately defrocked over far more minor 
offenses than what went on with McCrelly. Or exiled. Yeah. So now, as far as we know, then, if he's not laicized and he's still on the archdiocese and payroll, which means parishioners ultimately are footing the bill for this priest and many others. Which brings us to Rodney's yes. point here, yeah. the footing the bill for sexual miscreants right. Uh, right. Uh, of a particular nature here, actually. Yeah. So while all of this nonsense continues, um, the Archdiocese of New York continues to pay out millions to homosexual sex abuse victims. They've, they've done for years and they continue to now. And in order to help fund that, they took out a $100 million lease. <coughs> line of credit. Excuse me, line of credit on, on a property uh, immediately behind St. Patrick's Cathedral known as the Lot Palace Hotel. Uh, that's a, luxur a luxury hotel. It used to be the bottom floor, used to be the residence of the Archbishop. Um, they've since. Yeah, you can see the hotel built on yeah. top of it, the glass, right. but the whole, that nice four story structure there used to be the residence of the Archbishop. And that was, that was originally um, leased uh, in 19, in the early 70s, uh, for a million dollars a year. Um, I'm, so they're still making money off of uh, leasing the land to other people. Uh, and I imagine since then the, you know, one million is because of uh, inflation and stuff has probably ballooned. But they're not saying how much they make off that property. But well, we do know how much but, they're paying on it because but, it's, it's a $100 million line of credit. Now, mm -hmm. they're probably, it's probably not a sitting there as $100 million out, but they're probably drawing down <coughs> on it to take the money. And this is what people need to understand. They're asking for $200 million from the yeah. parishes because they don't want to take that money out of, their, out of this pot <coughs> and pay it out into those, you know, 200 and whatever, 230 parishes. They don't want to do that uh, because this pot <laughs> has to compensate for that, whatever it is, multi tens of millions of dollars line right. of credit on that piece of property right. and probably others also. But that property is one of the most envied pieces of land in all of Manhattan. It is right smack in Midtown on Madison Avenue. I mean, you can't get richer land than that. And the Archdiocese has had to apply for, and this is all reported in the New York Times and Financial Times on, a hundred million dollars mm -hmm. to pay off the sex abuse things, right. of which Father McQuelly's not that, not that they've had a, what that wasn't a, a kid thing, but it's still the point of this whole homosexual mm -hmm. culture Absolutely. in the clergy in New York. They're shaking. And it costs the people at the end of the day it keeps yeah. rolling down from this one to this one, and then finally to the parishes to this lady and her two hundred fifty thousand exactly. dollars yeah. right. give us two hundred fifty thousand dollars because the New York Archdiocese recently set up a victims compensation fund which essentially if you claim to be a victim of sex abuse in New York you can come forward you make your claim and then if it you know it checks out everything you get your payout but you have to promise first um, never to sue the Archdiocese and you have to sign a confidentiality agreement meaning you can't talk about it um, so much but, for transparency. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, the parishioners are the ones ultimately footing the bill. Mm -hmm. What? We just had a recent payout of $1.8 million, $1 million last million dollars month. To, yeah, to, to six people. Five and, of whom were male. Yeah, right. So it's homosexual yeah. sex abuse. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's, that's the bottom line here. You had a homosexual <laughs> sex abuse driving away the parishioners. I know at Francis A. Chantel and, and Cabrini, the parishioners had it with McQuelly, mm -hmm. and they didn't want him around. They didn't want to be in the parish. So you're driving away good parishioners. They're not getting fed the faith. They're leaving on their own. It's this homosexual, effeminate priesthood that we have that's driving them all the way. And at the same time, this effeminate, homosexual priesthood is racking up all these bills because 90% of all the sex abuse since 2002 has been shown by the USCCB reports to be homosexual in nature. And we have reported multiple times that kind of one of the roots of the problem is the Vicar General, Gregory Mustacholo. This man is sort of at the center of running the homosexual mafia, and people are calling it a mafia because he has the power to punish good priests and protect good ones, uh, bad ones. For instance, he's good friends with Father McCrelly. Uh, he's, he was good friends with uh, Father Gary Mead, who was caught in a gay sexting, and now he's been promoted to the Archdiocese and TV, yeah. and he still is. Um, uh, who, who was the other one who, who fled in the dead of night? Uh, Monsignor um, Michael Hall. Right. He, they were allegedly boyfriends. Um, and he, he was given three full-time paid positions by Mr. Tolo. And then now the guy's, you know, some Episcopalian priest married to a woman somewhere. In Scotland. But, mm -hmm. In Scotland, but, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the scandals in this place, in, in New York, are, again, they get so much attention because it's New York. And, right. you know, people have 
People do a lot of talking in New York. I used to live in New York. They, they, I used to live in Manhattan. They, people do a lot of talking. And, uh, you know, frankly, I mean, I, I think one of the things that's most, this is debilitating for the good clergy. Mm -hmm. There are some, I know, I know a good number of them. There are very many fine men who are priests in New York. And they are continually hit with this stuff. I, I mean, think about this just on the pure human level on the ground. These good men who have lived their vows faithfully, who have cared about the eternal welfare of, their, uh, of the souls in front of them in their parishes, their sheep, these men now have to go out and put the squeeze on parishioners who likewise have been faithful to make up for all this evil going on, which emanates from and is controlled from and allowed to go on from the chancery. So the chancery hires this marketing firm, which by the way gets 10% of the money. So let's, let's not forget that one. If $200 million gets collected, the, the firm gets 20 million of it. Uh, so all of this happens. I mean, how manifestly unfair, how unjust is this? And yet they're all meeting right now. They're all going, you know, the, the bishops in America are all meeting in uh, Baltimore right now. They're all going on about justice and justice is the most important thing. Is it just to rip off the people who have been good and send the good priests in there, you know, hat behind their hat, but just sit there and go, give us your money now to make up for their sins? I mean, this is just disgusting. How no do these people, how does Joe's willing <laughs> sleep at night? How does Cardinal Dolan put his head on the pillow at night and sleep? Most of Cholo, I mean, go on. We know from all kinds of priests there who've told us that there are priests living in Manhattan in the rectories with their gay lovers. And Dolan knows all about it. Dolan knows all he about it. Do a group of parishioners went to Cardinal Dolan about this and just nothing happened about it. He called the guy in and just said, hey, chill, you know, you know don't let this be so obvious yeah. or whatever. And I mean, you, at some point, you just got to say, you know, you know, what the heck is going on? Almost. And we slipped. need to also mention. <laughs> we need to also mention that New York is also in the middle of very costly litigation because they're refusing to honor Archbishop Sheen's niece's request. She's the one with legal rights over the body. She's the one with the right to say where her uncle's body goes. They're refusing to honor her, which is which was backed by the court to move her uncle's body so the canonization process can go forward for Archbishop Sheen. And then Cardinal they, Dolan appeals. Right. Mm -hmm. when, when, when they had initially said, they initially said, we don't want to sue about this. We'll listen to the court. We don't want to, you know, protract this any longer. What happens as soon as they don't get what they want, they appeal and they continue to protract the litigation, which co is costing lots of money. Well, the Archdiocese is making up for it by honoring Archbishop Sheen with uh, having father, a homosexualist priest father, James Martin, speak. At the exactly. Sheen Center exactly. Uh, coming up. Uh, so. He's speaking at the Sheen Center. He is uh, the uh, presenter of an award. Was it December? Pope Leo the 13th award. The Pope Leo the 13th award. Mm -hmm. award. Yeah, uh, it's hosted. The event is hosted by Father Jonathan Morris. Mm -hmm. Of Fox uh, News. Uh, yeah, of Fox News fame. Uh, he is uh, He's presenting Father Martin, bringing him up on stage on the dais, to have Father Martin hand Cardinal Dolan the Pope Leo the 13th award. You know, this is just go. incestuous. It really Why is. don't you hit up all those people there for your 200 <laughs> yeah. million dollars? Yeah. Why don't you go to your Al Smith dinner Democrats? Mm -hmm. That whole dinner is organized by the Al is by Democrat. The entire board of directors, Al Smith the 4th, who's the chairman of the board for the Al Smith Foundation. He's a Democrat rolling in dough. Why don't you go hit him up for some of the 200 million dollars? Leave these good priests and these good parishioners alone. You got sell some of your assets. You know, you didn't do anything to get them. Somebody just donated it to me, so sell them off. But see, they don't want to hit the bottom line where they live. They want to pass that buck down to the parishioners. It's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It How these men live, I, I go to sleep at night, I have no idea. I mean, to be involved in this kind of thing. I mean, I hope Joe's willing is listening to this. Man, you know, you've been there for 30 years, Joe. Is it really worth getting a pension check, you know, in another year or two when you retire, whenever it is coming up close? Is it really worth a pension check? I mean, you, goodness, really? Really? For goodness sakes, man, grow up and have some integrity and call, blow the whistle on this stuff or just resign. You have to present all of this stuff in press releases. And what? I don't understand. I don't get it. No, zero integrity. And, you know, quite frankly, all of this stuff is being covered up and lied about because it produces a loss of salvation. 
people lose their faith over this. This isn't just some court case. You know, whatever you don't face in this life, you have to face in the next. And you do not want to stand in front of Jesus the judge. There's a wonderful prayer by St. Ambrose that says, While I long to have you as Savior, I fear to have you as judge. Yeah, well, that's and St. Ambrose said well, that. Well, said you can't serve God and mammon. We, they gave up serving God, so now they're serving mammon. Yeah, it's disgusting. We'll keep going through all of these. We're going to keep reviewing all these financials and look for anything noteworthy that jumps out. If something does, we will, of course, be sure and report it to you. For now, that's it for today. Please be sure and tune in tomorrow for the most well-informed panel discussion in the whole Catholic media world. God love you. Thank you.